Hey folks, back again to do a uh, tutorial this time on um, sharpening single bevel broadheads, two blade broadheads uh, and um, as part of that creating a new beveled edge on a broadhead that is technically double bevel but we can modify it uh, so it becomes single bevel. Um, You'll see here on the left, this is a Grizzly El Grande. Uh, I think it's 190 grainer. This is um, fairly old. I've had it for a long time. Um, yeah, it's 190 grain glue-on broadhead with um, 125 grain adapter. Um, this is how the Grizzly comes from the factory. You can see that there's a bevel on the right side and no bevel there on the left. Um, the advantages of a single bevel design are numerous and I won't go over those in this video but it's easy to find information on uh, the advantages of a single bevel broadhead blade over a double bevel. Not to say double bevels aren't effective, they most certainly are, but the uh, the single bevel design definitely has some advantages. That's where this baby comes in. This is a Tusker Concord, 190 grain, with a 125 grain adapter, uh, plus four or five lead shotgun uh, pellets, number four, I believe. Uh, that bumps up the weight by another 10 grains. The idea behind that is that sharpening these, modifying these to uh, single bevel design takes a fair bit of weight off them, so I'd like them to be about 300 grains. You can see that from the factory, this is how they come, except for the without the adapter. There's a bevel on each side. These aren't sharp, but the manufacturer of these Tuskers um, puts a quick edge on them on each side. And they're not bad. In my other video, can, you can see that it's fairly quick to get them from this blunt, half-done state to shaving sharp in about 5-10 minutes. But tonight, we're going to look at modifying them so that... Um, we're going to create a bevel on this side and the bevel on the left side essentially will disappear um, at the cost of a fair bit of weight lost and it'll become the, the blade itself will become narrower and also shorter because we're going to take off a fair bit of material uh, there are compromises but the advantage is that it becomes a, double, a single bevel blade which has its pros. Um, again, I'm just going to screw it into the end of this alloy shaft, uh, chuck it in the vise and get to work. Um, there is a lot more work involved in um, making a, these into a single bevel, but again, it's fairly straightforward. It's a matter of removing material in a strategic way um, to get to the desired result. Someone asked me in the last video what happened to my thumb. I severed the tendon there, the extensor tendon, trying to reef the hose off the bottom of the washing machine to unblock the filter. Severed the, the tendon there on the underside of the, the washing machine had to get surgery. They sliced me down there, peeled the skin back to hunt for the tendon which had receded down into the thumb, bring it back in, repair it, and then close me up. Uh, no hunting, no no archery or hunting for 12 weeks which is a pain in the ass but whatever, that's life. Give me more time to work on these. Alright, this is an unsharpened tusker from the factory. 
Uh, gonna get to work on it again with this long bastard. I think it's 12 inch. Nicholson, I don't know. If you can get these elsewhere in the world, buy these in Australia fairly cheaply. Made in Brazil. I'm not sure if they're still made in Brazil, but they do the job. They're nice and sharp and they take off a lot of material very quickly. These heads are 52 Rockwell hardness or something around that figure. Um, so they're pretty hard, but these, these files make short work of them. All right, again, I'm gonna find the, the factory edge bevel angle, which is probably 25 degrees, and I'm just gonna run with that and just work quickly to take off a lot of material. I won't show you both sides. You can uh, work out what to do with the, um, the other side of the head based on this tutorial. There are other tutorials just like this on YouTube, but haven't seen one where somebody has created a single bevel grind out of a factory double bevel. Anyway, let's get to work. Um, just going to follow the angle and go hard, son. Feel free to fast forward. Try and stick with the bevel edge angle. I should really bolt my vice down properly. Alright, again we're just going to grind this, grind it, and grind it, and grind it until we create a burr on the underside and you'll see when you flip it over that all this grinding actually cuts away the bevel on the other side. I think theoretically single bevel blades can't, can't work correctly unless there's a flat edge on the on the opposite side. Just feel free to correct me if that's not right. There's a slight berth starting to form. Angle's not quite where I want it to be, but that's cool. The lighting's hard to work with in these garage conditions at night, but you'll get the idea.
there's a nice burr forming under there but we'll keep going until it's quite thick and stiff because I found that gives the best results when you really work it into a nice big lip of material I don't rate these heads as highly as I do the Grizzlies I haven't used the new Grizzlies but I've heard they're even better than the old ones um, I can get the Grizzlies sharper but that may just be me um, and obviously they're designed to be a double, a single bevel design too so head. this is definitely a compromise on the original design of the Tusker in my opinion As I'm touching it, I'm, the, the bevel's just coming loose. Uh, the burr, sorry. So. Now there's a burr that's been created pretty much all the way down. So I'm just going to go down tentatively. And make sure that it's just uniform all the way up and down the head, the blade edge. I'm not lifting the file up off the, the blade as I come back so that I can really maintain the, that consistent angle. All right. Alright, there's a consistent burr up and down the, the underside of that blade. What I'm going to do now is um, take a leaf out of the grizzly design and put a bit of a tanto tip on the, this tusker as well. So all I do is keep it on, keep the blade oriented this way up. Just put a slight mini bevel, I guess, on the opposite side. Of the tip. Now, like I was saying, this is straying from the design of the Tusker. So again, it's a bit of a compromise, and it's definitely not perfect. And uh, I'm not that great at creating these Tanto tips, but it's better than having that needle point, which is potentially susceptible to bending, uh, striking hard objects like bone or timber or whatever. Alright, that's far from a perfect Tanto tip, in fact that's probably the shittiest one I've done. But um, I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Now. Um, what I would do if I was going to be sharpening this one is go along the um, the opposite side on the right hand side and put another put another bevel down there. Obviously, if you're shooting left wing feathers, you can put your bevel down down the left side. As you can see, that the bevel on the left side has pretty much disappeared as I've taken a lot of material off from the top side. There are several ways of doing this. Removing the burr, some people like to strop it off, which I don't mind doing. I usually do um, strop it um, afterwards on a bit of cardboard. Um, I find that effective. I'll just show you the beveled edge there. It's not too bad really, it's not completely consistent, but you can see that it's, it's not too bad. Just doing it by eye, without a guide. I only took about oh, probably less than 10 minutes. Alright, anyway, what I'm going to do now is come as across on the underside as flat as I can to, rem to remove that burr. Uh, some of it's going to come off, some of it's going to fold over back to the other side, but you'll see what I do. 
similar to sharpening the, the, the double bevel. It's going to come along three or four strikes to remove that burr and then come back at the original angle very lightly. This is still using that the big 12 inch file which is definitely all you need. Now just trying to remove all this burr material and make both sides as smooth as possible. bugger all burr there. There's the the uh, wannabe Tanto tip which I, <clears throat> I'll modify and fix up as I go along with the other side. There's the beveled edge. Not too bad. It's not totally precise. It's pretty bloody sharp though. Like I said I can get the Grizzlies sharper. And if I strop this on a bit of cardboard, <coughs> just back and forth about 10 or 20 times, <coughs> it does get a lot, a little bit sharper. But this will be ready for hunting <coughs> as soon as this, this next bevel's done and the Tanto tip's fixed up a bit. <coughs> Cheers. See if it will shave. Yeah, that hair is just popping right off. <coughs> um, it isn't as sharp as it could be. If you if you stropped that real well, or even polish it up with a stone, which I don't really bother doing, <coughs> that'll just get surgically sharp. But this is adequate for hunting. These things split bone and generally blow right through pretty much everything that you're going to be hunting. Alright, cheers.